Hi everyone, Jerry Bellini here. And today you are not going to see my face, you're just gonna see my little hands because we are doing a how-to video. Someone asked me recently if I would show them how I make my fiber cord. Now, I do sell this in my Etsy shop, so if you don't wanna make your own and you just wanna buy it, it's in my shop at the Little House Etsy store. So first thing we're gonna do is go over the supplies. And I am going to put in the description box below a list of the supplies that I use. So of course you're gonna need fabric and we're gonna talk about that last. You need a clip, you need scissors or a fabric nips, a clamp if you wanna sit at a table and do this, or a clipboard. I like to use the clipboard because it's portable. You're gonna need a ruler if you don't have a good eye for cutting your strips. and you're gonna need a little cup of water. If you're using new fabric, be sure to rip that selvage off first before you rip your strips. If you're making your fabric twist from new fabric and you are trying to get a specific colorway, like red, for example, and you do not want any splotches of white or a lighter color, then you wanna be careful about what fabric you choose. So this fabric is cotton fabric. It is printed on the right side, all right? So the dye doesn't always go through to the back. So you'll wind up with fabric like this. Now that doesn't happen with all cotton fabrics, but some of them, it does look like that. So you wanna keep in mind when you're choosing your material to make sure that it has some kind of color on the back. If you're making a random um, random colorway, then you don't have to worry about that. So your strips, you're either going to tear them or you can cut them with a scissor. I, I do both, it just depends. If my arms are getting tired from ripping, then I will cut. But if you tear, I will tell you, you get a slightly different, you get a slightly different look. So you see that little fuzzy, fuzzy edge there? That little fuzzy edge might show up in your twist, okay? So there's like a little tiny, oops, where is the camera? See, there's just a little tiny, a little bit of fuzzy right there. It's not a big deal. This stuff is supposed to be very organic looking. If you cut it, however, I don't know if any of this stuff bothers you. That's why I'm telling you. If you cut it, you're gonna get strings instead of the little fuzzy stuff. All right, so as you can see, I do both. The next thing is you do not want all your strips the same length. Now, the last thing you're gonna to do to your fabric is you're gonna cut your strips on a diagonal. Okay, I moved everything out of the way so you can see what I'm doing. And we're gonna use the um, clipboard method. And the first thing you're gonna do is take two strips and you wanna make sure that they're two different size, two different lengths strips. And you're gonna tie a knot at the top. Just tie a regular overhand knot. And then you're going to stick the knot in the clipboard. And so it's not going anywhere. It's gonna slide around a little bit because it's on the table. Uh, let me see if I can figure out how to keep it from moving. Yeah, I think that works. Okay, good. So now you've got your two strips, you've got one on the right and one on the left and you're gonna twist them. And here's my cup of water. I'm right-handed, so I'm gonna keep it on the right side. And the water actually just kind of gives your fingers a little traction. 
So I'm gonna kind of fold this in half and with the right side on the outside. And if you don't care, if you're just making, you know, random, and I think when you're learn first learning, I think you should just kind of let it happen. You're gonna twist it. You're gonna twist it away from you. So now you're gonna twist this with your finger, twist it with the water, okay? And then you're going to pick it up and put it over the other, the left hand, the left side one, okay? Or whichever way you're doing it. If you're left-handed, you might be going the other direction. So now we've got this strip that's not twisted. So I dip my finger in the water and I twist it and I'm twisting it away from me. I'm twisting it away from me. So now they're both twisted, okay? So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take, and I'm right-handed, remember that, I'm gonna take the right side and put it over the left side. Okay, I did that very slowly. And see, this is where the stuff starts to get tangled after a while. Okay, so that's what I did. So now I'm going to twist away from me and over, over to the left. Okay, I get a little water. Twist away from me and then over. And you're just gonna keep doing that. Twist away, over. I'm twisting away from me and I'm moving it over. Twist away, over. I hope you can see that. So you see just below my hands, you see how it, it starts to get a little twisted over there. That's why you don't want your strips to be too long. Okay, twist over. Twist away from you, over. Now, you're not caring about the right or the wrong side. If you wanna care about the right or the wrong side, you have to make a little bit of a, an adjustment in what you're doing and you would have to like be a little bit more conscientious about this is the wrong side of the fabric and you're going to kind of like fold it in on itself and then twist it and then go over all right i'm untwisting this one so i can do the same thing for that so here it is it's open this is the wrong side of the fabric and I'm just gonna kinda push it in a little bit, the edges. This is a lot of work to do this. So that's why I would suggest you, and then you twist it. I would suggest you just let it happen if you're just learning. So twist it away from you and then over to the left. I'm going along and I'm twisting my fabric and now I'm running out of one of the strips. So I have to add another strip, but before I do, I wanna make sure that the strip, the next one that I add, is not going to fall at the same place. So they're not gonna both run out at the same time is what I'm trying to say. The reason for that is when you add the new strip, it is ever so slightly a little bulky and you don't wanna have two bulky pieces of fabric at the same spot. So I'm just gonna double check that this strip is not gonna end at the same place as the original one. I hope that makes sense. <laughs> All right, so to get ready to add the strip, I always like to do it on the right side because I am right-handed and I like to leave two to three inches. The fabric is cut on a diagonal right there and that helps with the bulk. That's why I do that. So now I'm going to lay the right side of the fabric of the new strip on the wrong side of the fabric of the old strip. And you see how far up I'm going? And I do this because I want a nice tight join. And then I'm just gonna fold that over and fold that over so that it's 
tucked in there nice and tightly, and then I'm going to twist, and I'm going to twist it nice and hard, nice and tight, and then I'm going to just continue along my merry way with my twisting. I did want to mention to you that I normally use a big clipboard, but we're still unpacking, yes, and I couldn't find my big clipboard, so that's why I have this little one. Now I'm coming down to where the, the join is. Well, part of the join is up here and the other part is going to be down here. Some people worry about the strips coming apart. I have never had a problem with them coming apart because I put that second piece, that new piece, in far enough that it is in there really tightly. So we're getting down to where the, the point is of the old strip. See that right there? And I'm not gonna worry about that. I always trim that off, that little triangle there. I have to move this up. And there we are. We're going right past it. Now see it right there? I'm going to trim that off. Now, Normally, I just wait until I'm finished with the whole thing, but I just want to show you, I just trim it right off. And that's it. Some people leave them on. I like to trim them off. But again, I do everything at the end when I'm finished. And if there's any little extra hairs that I don't care for, little strings sticking out, I do go over my whole um, entire length and I do trim a little bit here and there, wherever I feel like it needs it. All right, so you get the idea now, I hope. And when I'm done, I'm just gonna pretend I'm done here. I just tie a knot at the end. And I'm finished, and then I would cut this off. Now, if I want to just keep it because I'm going to come back to it later, that's when I'm going to use my clip. I'm just going to put the clip on there and then I'll come back to it later. But if I'm done, I'm ready, I want to use this to wrap a book or something, I just tie a knot. All right. I hope you enjoyed this video. It was extremely difficult to make because I'm still using my phone. I did get a new camera for Christmas, but I have not figured out how to use it yet. So hopefully my next how-to video will be a lot better. Thank you so much for bearing with me. Please leave me a comment um, below if you have any suggestions um, on a project you'd like me to do going forward. Let me know. If you have any comments on how I made this video, please be kind. <laughs> It was really hard. And thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you again next week. Bye for now.